If you had to fight any comedian, who would it be? Uh, Hasbulla. He's not a stand-up, but, you know. Bro, we should make that happen. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'd fight him. At the Madison Square Garden show. Uh-huh. He probably wouldn't do it. That p There we go. Talk that <laughs> Look in the camera and talk that to have Yeah. Me. Let's go. Let's make it happen. This is Fishing with David Lucas. And today we're out here with Heath Cordes. Yeah. What's up, dog? Nothing much, man. How are you? Chilling, bro. You, you got that Andy Milanakis disease, right? Uh-huh. That's what they call it. So you're going to look young forever? I I hope. You know, it would be <laughs> weird if I, like, didn't get any, like, wrinkles, but I started balding. So, like, I feel like something like that is going to happen at some point. Like, in my 30s, I'll just start balding. Or maybe not. We were we were just with Andy Milanakis, and I think he's, like, 49, bro, and he's looking like a lesbian woman now. Honestly, I didn't even know he was still alive. Yeah, he's still out here. We were just with him. There we go. He's doing the damn. Don't be scared. I got him. I got the bad boy. All right. You're sacrificing yourself for a good cause. Let's see if we can catch some fish out here. Yeah, we got this. Ooh, he's not happy. Yeah, he shouldn't be happy sticking a hook through him. <laughs> what if he liked it? <laughs> How long have you been doing comedy? Um, Two years. Like, uh, two years this October, as soon as I got on Kill Tony. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's what's up, bro. Yeah. You started in Alabama? Yeah, I uh, did comedy in Huntsville, Alabama. How's the scene there? Not bad. It's a good scene. You can get up about five times a week if oh, you want. That's all you need? Mm-hmm. What comedy club they have there? They have Stand Up Live, and then I did just a lot of coffee shops back right. there because I was under 21. I mean, that's even if you were over 21, that's, that's pretty much how I was in L.A. You do a lot of coffee shops, a lot of bar shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of places used to let us... Well, L.A. used to be real lax Yeah. when I first moved there because I was underage, and a lot of places didn't check ID. Yeah, and then they got, like, really yeah. um, tense about it as soon as I started doing comedy. I know in Austin they did because I took a trip out here when I was 20, Yeah. and I could not do anything. I was only able to do, like, one mic for, like, a whole week. Damn. Yeah. All right. Let's see how you cast. Yeah, so you press this bad boy. Yeah. Not bad. Not terrible. Not bad. Not bad, bro. Not bad at all. <laughs> not bad, yeah. For the first cast of the day. What 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 started you to get into comedy? Um, you know, I, I dropped out of school because I just wasn't feeling my major. What was your major? Uh, marketing. And then that would have been so weird to have you at a board meeting. Yeah, I know. Looking that, like <laughs> that was a big thing, and like I didn't really realize it until I started doing comedy for a bit. But like, there's not many careers where looking like this it actually propels you forward. <laughs> and especially like if I tried to like do some business stuff or whatever, it would just made when things so much more difficult. Yeah. Disney World, bro. Disney. Mm -hmm, I could always work at Disney. Bro, you can act in a Disney movie right now yeah there you go. i'll just work as the theme at the theme park as like one of the yeah, it just let it sit snow white dwarfs <laughs> that's pretty crazy <laughs> how do your parents feel about your career path yeah mom's happy uh grandma's happy yeah mm -hmm. both happy guys that's my good. grandma was really nervous about me moving out here because you've never been away from home mm -mm, yeah my first time it happens, bro. My mom wasn't too happy about my career path when I first started. Mm -hmm. And now <laughs> she, exactly. she's, she's reaping a lot of the benefits, so yeah. she can't really complain too much. Mm -hmm. I know my mom, they just didn't see where it was going to go. They how old, how old, you, how old is your mom? Uh, my mom, she's like 56, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that generation, they don't... 
they were pretty much just taught like go to college and that's how you make a living then you get the house and you get the kids and you get the mm. dog I, the generation we the, I, the generation our parents came from they didn't really know like self-made yeah it wasn't really taught to them from their parents and it's getting harder and harder to make it just the general way you know the old-fashioned way yeah man everybody has a college degree now mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it's like the only way to really you know gain financial freedom or have any type of money when you get old is to be self-made yeah it sucks but it pays off yeah by time by time me and you are older we're not i don't even think social security is going to be a thing yeah and if you possible. haven't if you haven't put up your own money like too bad mm -hmm. that's just how it's going to be mm -hmm. this wind is crazy blowing the bobbers right back to us people yeah, always right. say y'all never catch nothing on the podcast let's see what we I normally do pretty good out here. I, I feel like it's going to be a good day. We're going to bring some bad boys home and we're going to fry them up. Oh, yeah. we Yeah, I got to I gotta start doing um, cook and catch. Yeah. And then put, like, the the the, the cooking part, like, on the Patreon. Mm -hmm, that would be cool. Put the full thing. Yeah, that would be dope as hell. Yeah. Cook and catch. We got to – what do you think about adding that, Daniel? The cook and catch? Who house we gonna do it? I don't want that shit at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna be cleaning no fish at my house. She do it out in the wild. Yeah, just out here. Just yeah. bring, bring a fillet knife, bring a, a burner. Exactly. Yeah, cooking catch. Yeah, I like that idea. Just do it out here. It wouldn't take long, bro. You know, you got some water. It, it'll take five to five minutes. I haven't cleaned the fish in a while, but it'll take like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be too bad. What do you gotta do? You gotta scale them and then cut the skin off. Yes, right? scale them. Uh, you know, fillet. Depending on how you like. I grew up in a house. Like when we used to when we used to catch fish, my great aunt just liked them butterfly. He didn't like no fillet. He wanted to eat everything. He wanted the bone. He wanted the whole. He felt like filleting was wasting meat. Yeah, I'm not big on fish bones. They're so tiny. Yeah, they'll kill they'll you. Catch you. Be choking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you grew up in, where you grew up, Alabama? Mm -hmm. What part? Yeah, like center Alabama, like right in between Birmingham and Huntsville. You don't have an accent, that's... Mm -hmm. My mom's was from Indiana. Oh, okay. So she didn't have too much of an accent herself. And you always lived in Alabama? Yeah, grew up there. How was it growing up there? It was fun, there wasn't much there. So a lot of it was just like uh, going to fast food to hang out with right. friends and then like hanging out at Walmart and dumb shit like that. Right on, hell yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, how was, like, at what age did you stop growing? Uh, I, I realized something was up around middle school. I was like, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> they didn't know it at birth or anything? No, nah, I don't know. I had, uh, con I was diagnosed with, like, congenital scoliosis at a very young age. I had, like, surgery on that when I was, like, 14 months old. And then I had more health problems that I was diagnosed with around middle school. And so I think that, like, had a big part of it, too. Yeah. Like, just my body was, like, fighting two chronic diseases at once. Yeah, did your penis stop growing? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's you would be able to tell that it's not a baby penis. <laughs> and that'd, that'd be like a dope part of like stopping to grow, like if you got a full grown dick, you know what I'm saying? Bro? Yeah, I wouldn't even be mad at all if it was gigantic, you know? It would surprise everyone. Put, put my dick on your body? <laughs> exactly, it'd be fantastic. We had got drunk somewhere, bro. I, I, don't, I forgot where the hell we were at. Maybe it was when we were doing uh, one of those uh, theater shows with Tony, and I was like, yeah, well, let's ask Heath to take his dick out. Like, I want to see it. I'm, I'm not gay, but I want to see his dick. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and you lost your virginity with Kill Tony, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the night before the H-E-B show, and I specifically knew that night that I was going to make it happen. Oh, you just knew? Yeah, I planned it for the show. It was specifically <laughs> for that show. Give us a rundown. How'd it go? So I was just like, uh, I was doing a show at Sunset, mm -hmm. and um, I had a nice person that I knew that was in town for the show uh -huh. that I was planning to see that night. And then there were so many fans at around downtown that it was just easy. I literally... Uh, Cynthia, Celia, whatever. I don't know. Uh, she asked me that night. It was, I didn't have to do anything for the main part. Just happened. Celia, the big girl? Uh huh. Who was on Kill Tony? Yeah. The one who was in Arizona with us? Yeah, or no, 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 no. 
Uh, I thought you were talking about that big old girl. Yeah, the joke was uh, I fucked up her name on stage. Oh. Uh, her name was Cynthia, and then I called her Celia by oh. accident. Yeah. That's why, I think. I, I was like, bro, whatever, Celia can put your whole body in her pussy. Oh, she would destroy me. I would I would be a dead man. I would die. Oh, we got caught. Yeah, yeah, just bring yours this way. Yeah, that would be funny as hell. <laughs> That'd be funny as shit. Be scary. <laughs> Did you use a condom? No. Good job. <laughs> it ain't really sexy if you use a condom, bro. Yeah. Was it everything you thought it would be? I guess so, because my expectations weren't too terribly high. I was like, I was more concerned about saying I got pussy in front of 8,000 people. <laughs> Since then, have you had any chicks? Yeah, occasionally. Hell yeah, bro. Occasionally. That's what it's all about, bro. Comedy out here, bro. There's so many nice homeless people that are just willing to have sex with you on the oh, streets. God. That's that's uh, my main squeeze. Saw the nice homeless people in Austin. I've seen a couple of pretty homeless women before. Have you? Yeah. Not really here in Austin, but in L.A. Okay, that makes more sense. Because, bro, they were probably once upon a time like a model or mm -hmm. an actress. Yeah. And they just lost their way. Let me throw yours back out there. Cool. You were in LA recently with Tony, right? No, I've never been to LA. You never been to LA? Mm mm. I think you love it out there. Yeah, my first time will be uh, this May. It's fun, bro. I miss LA a lot. I What's definitely it? like uh, wanted to live there at some point, but then I just realized how fucking expensive it was. You just make a whole bunch of money and don't worry about it. Yeah. That's the goal, right? Yes, sir. Have your parents been to Austin to visit yet? No, I'm the only one from my family that's been out here. So how tall are your parents? I mean, my mom, she's like, still kind of short, but for a woman, not that bad. You know, right. like 5'3", something like that. And your dad? He was like 5'6", I think. So you were already like given that. Yeah, none of my family's tall, tall. Yeah. yeah, how tall are you now? I'm like 4'11". It's not bad. <laughs> That's awful. not bad for a dwarf. <laughs> not awful. I mean, you can still pull at four eleven. Yeah. Is is it, is it four is it four eleven? That's a disability. Yeah, or maybe. Is it like considered a midget? Maybe I've I've looked it up before, and like I've heard people say under five feet, and then I think uh, medically it's under four nine or four oh, nine. Okay, yeah. there it is. Yeah. How was it in high school being short? It was all right. I was a band kid, oh. and so that's mainly who I hung around. What was your yeah. instrument? I played the trumpet. Yeah. You seem like a trumpet. We had a, a, we had a We had a short kid in my band in high school that played the drums. He was so tiny. Yeah. I wanted to play the saxophone before I started in school, and then I just like went with the trumpet because that's what uh, my band teacher recommended. <laughs> <laughs> How he gonna tell you what to play? Yeah. You still play it now or no? No, I gave it up as soon as I graduated. <laughs> <clears throat> what was the turning point? So did you know you wanted to do comedy in high school? Mm -mm. I, uh, for the longest time, I thought I was going to be somewhere in the medical field. When I was really young, I thought I was going to be a doctor. And then I went through school and I realized that. The shit hard. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was thinking nursing. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, it would be awful to be a nurse. Every time I come in the room looking like this, they'd be like, what the? What? This, the disrespect you would get, bro. Yeah, exactly. Especially, especially if you get some old black lady. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh, oh, baby. so tough. Uh-uh, baby. You don't know what you do. <laughs> so tough. Bro, yeah, because I mean. Hey, here's your fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> the disrespect, bro. You, you get disrespected so bad. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's when I switched to marketing, like right around my senior year. Yeah. And then I realized I hated that too. So I dropped out, wasn't doing anything for a little, like just for a few months. And then uh, I actually watched like Dave Chappelle's The Closer uh, yeah. special came yeah. out. And had, like that big old uh, ending closer part about community. And it just like, uh, it really, uh, 
it was nice at the moment, and so that's when I went to my first open mic after watching that. Yeah. Because I always loved stand up. I loved watching it. Is he your favorite comedian? Um, Chappelle's in my top three for sure, and then CK. Yeah. And then Norm and Burr are like fighting for three Which all Norm? the time. Norm McDonald. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you're talking about Mark Norman. Yeah. I love him too, obviously. The more I watch him, the more I like him. Yeah. Like, it's. It's, it's McDonald so... McDonald or uh, Norman? Norman, bro. Like, he's he's so good with his word usage. Mm. He don't really waste any words because uh, he did the... Uh, what's that theater here in Austin called? The Paramount? Yeah, he did that. But he also did uh, The Mothership all this week. Yeah. You got to see him for a second last night. That was cool. Yeah. Him and... Uh, what's the fool name? Uh, Dan Soder? Yeah, mm -hmm. Soder's funny. Yeah, he's really, really funny. I never really watched him. His special just came out. Mm -hmm. Dude's a beast. Dude's a fucking... Do you feel like we're at the peak of comedy, or do you feel like it was back in the day with, like, the Richard Pryors and stuff? Definitely a new era. Um, it's, it's turning into... Uh, it's more evolved in every year, I think. Yeah. I like the you different styles. You get so many styles. different brands and yeah. yeah, of comedy. Like you got Cam, the Cams, the fucking Casey Rockets. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, I don't. I don't. Who's the closest person we can say? To you know, Casey? Who Casey makes me think of kind oh. of Robin Williams. Yeah, he yeah. makes. I I always think of him as like the Robin Williams of our generation. Yeah, Robin Williams mixed with a little Jim Carrey. Yeah. So much energy on stage from start to finish is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's insane. There's a lot of talent here in Austin, man. So much. I like it. It, it uh -huh. makes it makes people get better. It really does. It was like kind of intimidating when I first moved here. Yeah. And then like I just realized how welcoming the scene was for one thing. And then so when you're around those people that are so good and they care for you, like you said, it makes you better. It's very welcoming, bro. Yeah, dude. When I was in LA, there was not... Comedians here actually care for each other. Yeah, they do. That's crazy to see. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of times in life, we get very busy. Uh, comedians especially, and also people who work every day in life. We get busy and life can bog us down. I've suffered from my own mental health issues and we often don't have time to go to a therapist. So BetterHelp is here to help you. You can actually use them online and you can choose your own therapist. If it's not a good fit, you can choose another therapist for no additional charge. That's the great thing that I love about BetterHelp. It helps you become a better person. This is something I believe everybody in America should take serious because oftentimes with mental health, it's that what I like to call it invisible disease. So you can't really tell when somebody's plagued with a mental issue. So why not in our busy schedules use better help to help us? It's convenient. It's on your phone. And if you don't match with the therapist, you can just pick another one at no additional charge. That's the best thing that I love about better help. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help. Uh, visit betterhelp.com slash FDL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash F-D-L. No bite shit. What the hell is going on? I'm going to catch a duck, dude. We should have brought bread. <laughs> You've ate duck? Well, you live, you lived in Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. I've never had duck before, though. Never? But that's why I want to catch one, you know, so we can, I can feed the both of us with my... <laughs> My cat. Oh, that's why you say you should have. I think they said bread is bad for ducks. Is it? Well, I mean, we're going to kill it. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think they said bread is bad for ducks. It's terrible for them, bro. I caught another stick. Yeah, that's all we've caught so far. Get it off the hook. Yeah. Okay. Do you know your end goal in comedy? What do you want to do? Um, I thought I'd have my goal for moving here was uh, getting getting the job at the mothership. Yeah, so and that was always just kind of like something like, I don't know, maybe it will happen. That's why I'm going to move here. Regardless, I think I'd get better here in Austin. So it's crazy to see that that actually worked out. 
And then Kill Tony, I had no idea what was going to happen with that. Yeah. Um, things are moving a lot faster than I thought they would. That's good, bro. Yeah. But end goal, as far as end goal, you know, everyone wants to sell out the garden at some point. Yeah. In their name. Yeah. That's, what, 19,000 people? Mm-hmm. That's definitely, like, the big, big dream, I think. We're doing it in August. That's so crazy. Yeah, and that's fucking nuts. I didn't never thought in my life that I would be even doing a minute at the garden two years into comedy. That's so crazy, bro. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. Yeah, I can't believe it. Like, I, man, it's going to hear 19,000 people laughing, cheering, or whatever their reaction is, it's 19, even if they're booing you. Mm -hmm. Who can even say they had the opportunity to get booed by 19,000 people? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. It's that's, crazy. Yeah. It's a story at the very least. Nobody's catching anything today. I'm looking at them dudes down there. They're not having any luck. This is the size lake I want to build at my house. Yeah, it'd be cool. I want a couple of lakes, but this this will be like the main one. Mm -hmm. It's probably about two, two, three acres. There's giant uh, carp in here. Giant what? Carp. Oh, really? Yeah. Are they out around this time? I don't know, bro. You know, we had that funky weather but mm -hmm. like two days ago it was freezing and now it's back warm. Yeah. So the weather be throwing fish off. You don't know what they, the what it's warming up. So they could be deeper. They could be shallow. You never know. Mm -hmm. I'm an old school fisherman. I don't believe in uh, live scope. What's that? Live scope. It's like a sonar and it shows you where the fish at, how deep, how many, how big. Oh, that's cool that they even have that. Yeah. We got to get one though. We tried the podcast on the boat. It don't work as good. Does it not? No, nah, bro. It's too... The wind blowing you. You got to drive that mug. Yeah, it's... Maybe if I had a pontoon boat. Yeah. That'll probably come soon because you can just anchor out. And it's like being in a living room. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. But other than that, it's, I like... I like this aspect. Just sitting by the water. It's like two old men mm -hmm. just talking shit. You can talk about whatever. Yeah, it's, I like it too. Like I said, I can't remember the last time I went fishing. It's yeah, nice. I, I try to fish at least four or five times a month. When I, I try to fish in a lot of the cities that I travel in. Yeah. A lot of people try to take me fishing. I went fishing in, uh, where the fuck? It was North, North New York, like Rochester. It was cold as hell, bro. Are there fish out just even when it's cold in yeah, New York? Yeah. That's cool. It was damn near on the Canada border, bro. It was, it was too cold for me, bro. Mm -hmm. I think I stayed out there with that dude for like 45 minutes. I was like, hey, man, I'm a bitch for the cold. We got to go. Yeah. Have you ever been ice fishing? No, but when I did Canada last year, well, in 2022, uh, these people asked me, and I was like, I'm not used to that shit. It like, would be I, good content, at the very least. I'm just not used to it. Mm -hmm. it, does, it does sound weird. These fucking weirdos. They, they want to feed the ducks. They probably got some weird ass band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Suicidal aunts, or some <laughs> shit like that. A lot of weird people in Austin, man. Mm, keep it weird. Jesus. It's, <laughs> you don't realize, like, for me, most of my time is spent downtown. I live downtown, the club is downtown, and then like when you come out here, and you get to mingle with regular people, you, you get to see how weird Austin really is. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of chicks, though. Oh, my gosh, the women. They're into fucking... They're, they're bad out here. They're, they're bad out here, but you... When you go to L.A., bro, your mind will be blown. I know. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I was in Alabama for 21 years. They got some nice chicks in Alabama. Uh, some, some, but there's, like, three of them per city. You got to go to uh, Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. But they're, they're all, like, the out college. of state for the yeah. main part, you know? Tuscaloosa got babes. Yeah. That's a college city. Yeah. Montgomery. Montgomery. 
Got a few. Mm -hmm. My cousin lived in Montgomery. I used to go there when I was younger. Got a few chicks out there. Georgia got baddies. That's where I grew up. Yeah. Thick. And we went to... How, how was it when you were, how was it with the girls when you were in high school? Terrible, non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, like, Kill Tony. Like, nothing happened before Kill Tony. And now I guess it's just put so many eyes on me. Then yeah, they, they, they probably had, like, weird fetishes. Yeah, yeah, all they reached out to, it was like a, a smoke signal to every <laughs> person with a weird fetish. Any guys probably position you? Yeah, that's yeah, the know. weirdest thing. I know they do, bro. Going, going through the DMs and seeing like these people that are just, <laughs> they they have no chill about it. <laughs> they just want to fuck and they make it very clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny, bro. Yeah. Would you be gay for play? For pay? Yeah, for pay. Mm-hmm. He's too crazy. How much? How much? What would it take for you to be gay right now? Uh, I need a house and enough to pay the taxes on it for like 30 years. So a nice house and $2 million? Yeah. At least. I don't know anything about taxes. That's not bad. Probably need, depending on how big the house is, probably need between like twenty to 30000 a year for the house yeah. for, in taxes. You gotta think about utilities. Yeah, yeah. I need. I just need to be set for like the rest of my life. One blowjob, set for the rest of my no, life. What, are, what if they were trying to penetrate you? If I'm set for the rest of my life, I'll think about it. You know, maybe I gotta examine the penis first. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Like if, if I, I feel like if I was gay, it would be the smaller the penis, the better. Yeah, definitely. I don't like. I'd be very intimidated by a big penis. If it's a gigantic penis, there's more money involved. I need yeah. more money. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't think there's an amount yet. <laughs> I'm going to ask my mom. I'm going to pray my mom one day and ask her, like, Mom, how much money would be okay for me to be gay? <laughs> Let's see what she said. <laughs> what I'm going to ask her that. Okay, yeah. I thought you already asked her. No, I'm going to ask her one day because my mom's an old school fucking Southern Baptist black woman. What if she's just like... You know, 200, 200,000. <laughs> I'll cuss her out and tell her she's cut off. <laughs> Ma! Yeah, real man. I'll get it back out there for you. Cool. Oh shit. Gonna get that goddamn twig again. be crazy if you hooked that bird. Uh, bro, I hooked a bird one time in LA, dude. Did you? I was fishing at Echo Park. This dumbass, it was a goose actually. Came and wrapped himself up in my court, bro. It was, he was like, ah, ah. I'm like, fuck. That's crazy. Yeah, and then he took off with my fucking pole. <laughs> People were looking, it was, I left. <laughs> and I'm like, I might go to jail. I, don't, I didn't know what was gonna happen. He was like making all this noise. That's insane. And I was trying to reel him in. <laughs> Come here, bird. It was like no helping him. It was it was the craziest. I bet he figured it out. I'm pretty sure I saw a viral video of one time of a goose getting like uh, trapped in like fishing wire. That might have been your goose. Might have, bro. It was an Echo Park, bro. It was scary as shit. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I am not trying to go to jail for like animal endangerment or, or some crazy. Cause they put you, bro, them white people, PETA, mm -hmm. people at PETA, mm -hmm. that's probably who protect them. Bro, they don't fuck around with them animals. Yeah. I'm already hated because of my subject matter about people like that. Yeah. So it's like, mm-mm. <laughs> they got an aerator out here, that's good. We'll catch something soon, I can feel it. Who do you think would win in a fight, William versus Casey Rocket? Uh, that's a good question. Probably William has size on Casey. Yeah, a lot of size. Yeah, well, but William's I, a big boy. Mm-hmm. For sure. He's like six one. Casey's probably five eight. But I feel like Casey would get wild. Squirmy. He's he very would start squirmy. biting. 
Probably. Uh, gouging eyes. Uh huh. If you had to fight any comedian, who would it be? Uh, Hasbulla. He's not a stand-up, but you know. <laughs> well, we should make that happen. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'd fight him. At the Madison Square Garden show. Uh huh. He probably wouldn't do it. That pussy. There we go. Talk that shit. Look in the camera and talk that shit to have Yeah. Me. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Don't be afraid. I wonder how much money he got now. He's he's probably makes so much money. Like, where is he from? He's from overseas, right? Over yeah, there. like Russia or something like that. Let me look. Pakistan? Is he from ba Pakistan? Oh, Dagestan. Mmm. It was so funny when uh, when Mike Tyson met him and thought he was a real kid. Yeah, I didn't see it. Bro, you should you should uh, get like real swole. Then get super jacked. That'd look crazy. <laughs> it wouldn't look right. <laughs> like It'd be muscles. dope though. <laughs> yeah. It'd be dope. It'd be dope as hell. How do you like working at the mothership? Oh, uh, it's it's way better than fast food. Yeah. You used to, used to work in fast food? Mm -hmm. Where at? Uh, McDonald's, Popeyes, Taco Bell. <laughs> I did serving for a little bit at Cracker Barrel. I was a Cracker Barrel server. I hated that. So when people used to see you, they thought like it was underage shit? Yeah, for the main part. Yeah. That or they uh they thought I was like trans because <laughs> I'm like real tiny and they thought I was transitioning. So I get called ma'am a lot down south. <laughs> I can't believe in 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 uh, Alabama they're that polite. Yeah. To a trans person. Well, I think they did that shit on purpose, because I obviously look like a you know I'm going for a boy, right. but like they like heard that like little voice of a flute, and they're like I'm calling this son of a bitch man. <laughs> so when does your voice get deep? It's deep now. Yeah, it's it's definitely like deeper now. Um, in the last few years, mm -hmm. like when I before I turned seventeen, it was so high pitched. Oh, you had one of those like bully me voices. Uh -huh. Yeah. Damn. Voice of a flute. Damn. Little little boy. Bro, I've seen. I remember the first time I saw you get drunk, and I was scared. <laughs> when was that? Arizona. Arizona. I was like, no, no, what are you doing? <laughs> That's too much. But you only drink beer. Mm -hmm. You piss it out before you really get drunk. Yeah, that's true. You got to slam a lot of beers. Mm -hmm. Not me. Especially if I don't drink for the whole day. I get fucked up on like two beers if I really? drink it in an hour. Yeah, I'll get really buzzed. What happens if you drink liquor? Liquor? Dude, if I drink like two or three shots in a row, I'm not. I'm going to be slurring words for sure. <laughs> Forgetting sentences. Damn, son. Yeah. That's crazy. I did an off the wagon show in Austin, where it's like What's off the wagon. It's a it's a drinking show. Oh. Uh, so, and you you had to do like three minutes of one liners, and for every one that didn't hit, you had to take a shot. And I did like four sh shots in three minutes. They were having to carry you. Uh, yeah, it was bad. Damn. You had to drink a mystery drink after that. Uh uh, fuck that. <laughs> I only drink tequila, bro. I drink tequila. And when I'm fishing, I'll drink like Miller Lite or Bud Light. Mm -hmm. But I I, I uh, got drunk with Rogan on some whiskey, bro. That shit was horrible. Yeah, I've only taken like one shot of whiskey ever and threw it up immediately. I was emotional, man. I was over. It was when we were at the still doing shows. Oh, you got a fish? Did I? You, you got a bite? <gasps> Hold up. Let's let it stay. Okay. Look, reel in the slack a little bit. Uh huh. Hold up. Let him take it down again. Uh-huh. Might have got all your bait. Damn it. Really, really in slow, slow. Real slow. All right, now Jacob. Yay, 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 yay. Oh, oh, there you go. got him. We got him. You got him? Yeah. I think so. Let's go, Heath. Yeah, you got him. Hell yeah. Come here, you son of a bitch. Oh, a little bass. Oh. Bring it right here. Oh, we I got, got him. Yay. Yeah. Here you go, man. Boat flip. <sighs> Fuck you. Damn. You dumb fish. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of uh, swallowed this hook good. Yeah, you got it good. Look at 
Look at Heath. I caught a fish today. You wanna hold a fish? Yeah. Fish. Yeah. Throw it back in there. Some results. You said we were gonna catch one. Yeah, manifestation. Heath, call the fish before me. You the real bass daddy. <laughs> that used to be my name, bass daddy. Well, one of my fishing names. Bass dad? Huh? Did you say bass dad? Bass daddy. Bass daddy. Now I am officially Bass Daddy Jr. Bass Daddy Jr. Yeah. You caught a bass before me, big dog. <laughs> How long you been vaping? Vaping? I started like when I was like 14 years old. God damn. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, this new generation, y'all are fucked. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Y'all got, got all the bad shit at an early uh -huh. age, bro. My lungs are filled with popcorn. That's what they say, right? Mm-hmm. Popcorn lung. You ever you ever uh, smoked a real cigarette? Yeah, I did, uh, like, occasionally, but, like, never a real smoker smoker. I used to smoke cigarettes, bro, and I feel way better on the vape. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. They're smelly. Cigarettes are really smelly. They uh, every, give every, you headaches and shit. Every now and again, I'll get a cough, like, if I vape heavy. Yeah. Like, especially when I used to have that big pod with the battery. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the that mods. Shit, yeah, that shit was no good, bro. I used to be coughing like a mug. Mm -hmm. Big heavy clouds on those things. When I first moved to uh, Austin, Tony was smoking, everybody here was smoking. Cause I used to smoke cigarettes when I was younger. I had quit with the vape. And then Tony was smoking, I'm like, give me one. And then mm -hmm. I started back smoking cigarettes. I'm like, man, I gotta quit this shit. Like, girls didn't like the way I smell. Yeah. It's not All great. right, back to the vape. Back to the gay vape. Mm-hmm. What do they call it? Robot dick? Yeah. Robot chode. <laughs> chode. <laughs> That's such a white word. <laughs> my, my friends growing up used to say that. That's a chode, man. <laughs> Tiny little penis. No, hold up. What's the other thing? Where Chode means tiny. Yeah, it means like tiny, fat, little penis. Yeah, tiny, fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tiny, fat, little penis. <laughs> <laughs> I might put that on a shirt. Chode. Where my chode lovers at? Tear the sides of a vagina up, but you ain't going deep. <laughs> Just get a chant going in the crowd. Choke, 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 choke. Yeah, choke, choke. <laughs> they do everything in this park, bro. Like, this is lover's lane. Yeah. So many couples. How Dogs. nice. Huh? How nice. It is a nice park. I've never been here before. I've never been the type of guy to take a girl to a park and walk around. It's, yeah, it's too bright. That's gay to me. And it's too rapey at night. I don't know, bro. There, I'm sure there are some vicious people here, but yep. I've never, everybody, Austin's just weird. Yeah. Oh, we getting the bite. We getting the bite. Oh, shit. There we go. Get a turtle, Take man. It. I don't want no turtle. Choke, 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 choke. He probably ate all my worm. I saw him take it down pretty good, but I had too much slack to pop him. Damn. Yeah. Too much slack to pop his ass. You want me to jump in there and get him? You know how to swim? Yeah, I'm not good at it, but like, I can He's, I know how to swim. I don't feel like rescuing your ass. <laughs> Got it all, told you. Damn. Son of a bitch. I caught a turtle here before, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. I felt bad because the, like, you, there, he, he, he swallowed the hook. Oh, and shit. then when I was trying to get it out, he went inside his shell. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck you want? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's bad. I'm like, yo, what you want me to do, brother? <laughs> that turtle, if he is still alive, he's living a very hard life. <laughs> yeah. 
If money wasn't an option, where would you live, though? That's a good question. Uh, probably, like, I, I mean, I like it here for now, like, where I'm at, but just, like, best place ever. Uh, I've never been to uh, Amsterdam. That's you, always sound exciting. You Somewhere in Europe, there? probably. You'd be a wild boy. Yeah. They put your ass in the window. That'd be fun. <laughs> They put Heath up in the window <laughs> in Amsterdam. <laughs> You'd be in the red light district. <laughs> just in the window. Yeah, I'd just wear a thong and I'd make so much money <laughs> on the street. Like, Heath doesn't do comedy anymore. He's over there in Amsterdam <laughs> killing it. <laughs> that would be funny. I don't think of where else. I've never been to Amsterdam, but I had a layover there and it was crazy as hell, bro. Yeah. We How was the airport in Amsterdam? Did they sell dope. mushrooms in the airport? I don't remember. That'd be cool. You get your get a blowjob right after you get off the plane. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the women I saw, unless they have uh, like another category, the women I saw were just like whatever. Yeah. But I mean, anytime you go over to Europe, bro, they love us American men. But yeah. they don't. They don't be shaving. They don't shave. They, they don't shave their vaginas. What, what do they do? They, they hairy. Oh, okay. They hairy all over, bro. wonder why that's a thing in Europe. They they don't got fluoride in their water. Their teeth be kind of brown. Yeah. How do you uh, feel about fluoride in the water? Shit. Given the American diet, I feel like we need it a little bit. Yeah. It definitely helps the teeth. I know, like, when I was six years old, I feel like I didn't brush for like six months and I got like zero cavities. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Even as a six year old, I was like, how does that happen? Fluoride makes you dumb, but it keeps your teeth. Yeah, that's what they say. It makes you stupid as hell, right? That's what they say. I don't and and then for the it. spiritual people, they say it calcifies your third eye, the pineal gland. Mm. Pineal gland, pineal, however you say that word. I didn't know that. That's for those spiritual people, bro. You get one of them girls that believe in chakras and shit. Yeah. I don't exactly know what a third eye is other than... I third took, eye blind? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Took mushrooms, though, and I, I saw things differently. I like to think that's what a third eye is. How was it when you took shrooms? Out here in Austin? Yeah, you just like, uh, it, it, everything's all curvy. Everything's uh, moving around like the water. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't see God or anything. Yeah, yeah I just microdose. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, microdosing is the best way to do it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want no full trip, bro. Mm -hmm. I took like four tabs of acid at one time, once. You're crazy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> How was that? I, I started at like four in the morning and then I was like tripping all the way until like six in the afternoon. You're a wild boy. Mm -hmm. Out here? No, it was uh, back home in Alabama. Would you just stay in your room the whole day? No, I was like, I lived in this pretty nice place where like we were surrounded by forests. And so I was just staring at the forest and I thought it was like a bunch of hummingbirds. I like just moving around is crazy. It was actually pretty beautiful. I think that's point. the best way to do psychedelics. Just be out in nature. Nature, for sure. By yourself. Don't watch nature. No, yeah, in, in nature. Mm -hmm. I like to do it uh, in s definitely secluded, especially if the other person's not tripping, because then I feel like I can't talk to them and right. I get all stressed out. Yeah. I've had uh, there's a there's a female comic here. She did ask it one time. And I don't, I'm not like an expert with acid. And she called me. She's like, I want acid. And everybody's being mean to me. I was like, so what you want me to do? Be mean to you too? Yeah. You want me to roast you? Like, what the fuck am I? <laughs> Why'd you call me? I don't know what she wanted me to do. She called me like I was her spiritual guide. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm the one who's going to help her. Yeah. It was weird, but whatever. I help people when I can. You gotta help the hoes, bro. There you go, you gotta help the hoes. <laughs> uh, that should be a shirt, you gotta help the hoes. <laughs> Always help the hoes. Hoes make good housewives, <laughs> regardless of what they say.
what would be your ideal place to live? Mm. Definitely LA. I wanna, I wanna, I want a house in the hills in LA. Mm-hmm. And uh, Georgia, Georgia and Florida. Those are gonna be my three places. Yeah. I always thought it would be kind of nice to like when I'm old to move to like Montana if I yeah. got a bunch of land. That sounds dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just on some fucking uh, what's that? What's that TV show? Uh, like, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. I think. Just on some Yellowstone shit, bro. Yeah, no people. That's what I want. Just like yeah, so much land and not to see anyone. There's a forever. place I really like, but it, it feels kind of. Uh, uh, I like this place a lot. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Oh, I've never been. It's beautiful. Kanye used to have a place there. Kanye. That's one of my favorite people. <laughs> it's funny. He seems like he's doing well after everything that happened. Yeah, bro. He uh, he was able to sell his sh- shoes with Adidas again. Damn, I didn't know they got back with him. Yeah, he uh, made a whole bunch of money, dropped a new album, Vultures. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, bro. Like, Kanye's going to be Kanye. He's, he's going to be, regardless, he's going to be rich for the rest of his life. Yeah. Uh, he invested a shit ton of money in skims. So he has that, you know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we lost a <the> battery. <laughs> it happens. Pay one of them kids to jump in there and get it. Yeah. Once his water is over with. It'd be funny if the battery dropped and it's like all the ducks died immediately. <laughs> you just see fish floating up. <laughs> Fishing with David. <laughs> right. They do this thing. Uh, they put an electrical charge in the water. They do it at like a lot of uh, state run lakes to check on the uh, fish. They go in and shock the water and all the fish float to the top. Damn. They just like take a nap for a second. Yeah. They count them, see how well they're doing and shit. I like to do that in here just to see what's like in the water. Mm-hmm. Damn, bro, we're gonna really end this episode without me catching a fish? What? <sighs> That's ass. <laughs> That's ass, bro. Well, all right, here we go. <laughs> I got a fish. I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. Yeah, yeah you got one. We're good. We're good. We, we don't need another one. We had a good day. If we were relying on fishing, to survive, we'd be good with your fish. Mm-hmm. We would make it last for it. I could make a half of that fish last for at least three days. I need the other half. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. You don't eat much? Uh, I don't have to. Sometimes I do. Sometimes, you know, I'll eat like a sandwich for a day and I'll be like, I'm good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, how much do you weigh? 105? Like 90 something. I haven't like weighed myself in a bit. I feel like I've gained like at least 10 pounds yeah. since I moved to Texas. Just drinking a lot of beers? Yeah. Or, yeah. Beer weight. It happens, bro. Mm-hmm. Have you went to go get some Terry Blacks yet? No, I've never been to Terry Blacks, I don't think. What are you waiting on? I just haven't been. I've been to P. Terry's. There's so many Terry restaurants in Austin, Texas. That's P. one Terry's, thing I've noticed. P. Terry's is cool. You like In-N-Out better? In-N-Out's way better. Yeah. The only reason I tried P. Terry's is because I was like arguing that In-N-Out's the best fast food burger. Yeah, yeah. And then someone was like, I don't know, P. Terry's. And then it was just such a wetdown. Yeah, to- pe- people here in Austin believe in uh, Whataburger. Yeah, I, I'm not, they had Whataburgers back home and they're okay. But like as In-N-Out is superior to everything. It's the breakfast far. sandwiches are decent. Yeah. All right, bro. Well, thank you for fishing with me today. Yeah. Shout out your shit. Yeah, thank you for letting me fish with you, David Lucas. Yeah, it's fun. It was fun. fun. We caught a fish. Yeah, we caught a fish. Heath caught a fish. I'm a man now. Shout out your stuff. What you got coming up? Um, Nothing much. Just uh, follow my Instagram, the real Heath man. Catch him on Kill Tony? Yeah. And ladies, slide into them DMs. Yeah. Peace. <laughs>